Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about how we can quickly create low poly terrain like this in Godot. As a quick disclaimer, this is going to be done in Blender as opposed to directly in Godot for a couple of reasons. First, it's very easy to generate terrain in Blender so we don't have to spend a lot of time working on it by hand. Second, Blender gives us way more control over the mesh vertices than any of the Godot terrain add-ons so we can actually achieve that triangular look that low poly terrain is supposed to have. Beyond that, 3D modeling is a useful skill if you're serious about making 3D games in Godot, just like coding and math. Which takes us to our sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant can help you get smarter every day with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Its bite-sized lessons will allow you to easily create a habit of learning every day. With the Brilliant app, you can learn anywhere right on your phone. With fun, hands-on lessons, you can do whenever you have time. Whether you're diving into a new topic or doing a quick practice session, you can do this on the go in just a few minutes minutes. When it comes to coding, Brilliant will let you build timeless problem-solving skills which will help you thrive in the ever-changing world of programming. You will learn to think like a programmer by breaking down complex problems into manageable chunks of code while developing an intuition for computer logic. So if this sounds like something that will help you achieve your goals, you can try Brilliant at no cost for 30 days using my referral link as well as get 20% off on annual premium subscription once you see the benefits. So let's get right into it. In a fresh Blender scene, we get a couple of objects right off the bat that we'll get rid of in a second. But first, let's enable a plugin that will allow us to generate landscapes by going to the Edit menu, clicking Preferences, and searching for Landscape. Enable the Ant Landscape plugin and close the window down. Now let's select all of the starting objects by pressing A and then press Delete to get rid of them. Then to generate a landscape, we can go into the Add menu, Mesh, and select Landscape. In the bottom left corner, we can open up a window that will give us different options for landscape generation. Operator presets up top lets us choose between different types of landscapes, like mountains or canyons. In this case, I'm going to go for a mesa because I'm trying to make an island and it's fairly easy to turn it into one. There's also a bunch of other parameters here that we can use to customize the generated landscape like height, which controls the average height of the landscape, and maximum, that controls the height cutoff. Since we're going to need a bit more of a sea floor, we can limit how large the island is by adding an edge level, and then expand the size of the landscape by changing the mesh size X and Y parameters. Then to increase the number of vertices that we can work with, we can increase the number of subdivisions. Now, the landscape is kind of very smooth at the moment, so we can make it more well poly looking by clicking on this circle here, which will disable smoothing. Overall, the settings I use for this particular island are not very important, and I would suggest playing around with them to get something that you like. Now let's switch to the sculpting tab up top to make some changes to the landscape by hand. I'm gonna use the clay brush to add a little bit of a beach to the island, and then level it using the flatten brush. After we're done with that, we're going to raise the island higher by first going into the modeling tab and selecting the vertices of the island. Make sure you're in vertex select mode in the top left and then you can hit C on your keyboard to enable the circle selection tool. Try to get as close as possible to the actual shape but this doesn't have to be perfect. After that hit the proportional editing setting up top which will make sure that when we erase the vertices that we selected the vertices next to them will be partially affected too. Hit G as the shortcut for moving the vertices then hit Z to to walk the movement to the z-axis. The z-axis in Blender is like the y-axis in Godot, up and down. We can use the scroll wheel to change the size of the area with the neighboring vertices that's affected by the movement. Once we've positioned the island where we want it, let's go back to the sculpting tab and add a modifier that will reduce the overall number of faces that the mesh has and will make our island low poly. Click on the modifier tab on the right and select add modifier search for the decimate modifier and the generate section. Here, making the ratio parameter lower will reduce the number of faces that our mesh has while keeping the overall shape as close to the original as possible. So drop the number of faces here as much as you like and then click on this dropdown and select apply. Otherwise, this change won't be saved to the mesh. So the last thing that's left on the Blender side is to add materials. 
Go back to the modeling tab and enable the face select mode. Shift drag to select all of the faces and then click on the materials tab on the right side. Click new to create a new material, add a color to it and then ramp up the roughness so it's not shiny. After that hit assign so the material is applied to the selected faces and make sure to go into the viewport shading mode so that we can actually see the colors. Then let's add a second material by first selecting the faces that we want to be grassy using the circle select tool again, shortcut is C. And then to add a new material click this little plus sign on the very right and go through the same process of setting up this material up with a color and hit assign to apply the material to the selected faces. Add as many materials as you like and then let's export the scene as a a GOTF file for Godot. Once that's done, let's quickly pop into Godot and create a scene to use the terrain with. Add a directional light and world environment and then double click on the terrain GOB file. GOB is the extension for GOTF. This will let us edit the import options on the file. Click on the mesh node and tick generate physics which will automatically create a static body for the mesh. After that it's just a matter of dragging the file into the scene, scaling it up and then I'm also going to add a quick C by adding a mesh node set up as a plain mesh. Scale it up as well and then position it at a level that we want it compared to the island. Then add a quick material with a color to it and our low poly terrain is done. After this it's just a matter of adding some foliage to the scene to make it a little better look which I myself did using the proton scatter add-on and some canny assets. Maybe a topic for another video. As always, thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and you can find all of the project files on my Patreon. If you still haven't seen them, check out my first person controller tutorial or my beginner Minecraft tutorial for Godot. See you next time.